Hello friends, welcome back to Civil Depth BD. Today I will show you how we can calculate slab deflection by using ETAPS. At first we have to convert our model into the service condition that means for beam I will consider property modifiers 0.5 for column, I will consider I2 and I3 as 1. For ultimate state, we consider here 0.7 and for beam, we consider 0.35 for the ultimate condition. But for the service condition, we have to multiply those values by using 1.4. I hope you know this already. Then go to define section properties. Similarly, for wall, I considered 1. And for the spandrel beam, I considered 0.35. Sorry, 0.5. Okay. Now we will define a load combination if we didn't. So go to define load combination, service combination, go to modify. Here I have considered all the dead load and live load. Click on OK. Now we just uh, don't need this uh, use structure. So I will go to edit. Then I will go to edit stories and grid system, go to modify slash show story data. Then I will delete all the structures or all the floors except ground floor and the first floor. Okay. We just don't need them. Here I am interested to believe in a theory that. All loads will be transferred through the beam and column to the soil. Okay, so we just don't need all the floors. I will just consider here all the dead load and light load acting in this floor and this floor. Okay, now what we have to do? I will just analyze the structure by by considering slab members as membrane because as per theory that means uh, though the l by b ratio is greater than 2 as per theory they are membrane okay they are not shell but let me check what deflection value comes if we consider them as membrane so go to analysis basically as per theory it's okay for the better design of vertical members like column and shear wall, we consider one-way slabs as membrane in ETAPS. But if you check deflection by using this concept, you will get a huge value which is not acceptable. So one question may arise in your mind that what is the function of this type of membrane members or membrane slabs? Basically, we use this membrane slab for the conservative design of beam, column and shear wall. Okay. Now we will go to display. Then I will go to deform shape. Then from the combo, I will select service. I just need to use metric as the unit. Click on apply. Here you can see a huge value which is not in any tolerable limit okay so what will i do i will just consider all the slabs as shell because this is the real condition for slab design or slab reflection check i am telling again when i uh, design column beam and shear wall i take them one way if the l by b ratio is greater than two but for the slab design or the uh, for the slab deflection check, you can't go with this membrane type of slab. So shell thin, second one, no need to change. Third one, go to modify, select shell thin. Okay. Modify. Okay. Now just again go to run analysis.
here you can see one way direction has been banished now go to display store deform shape go to combo for the service combination here you can check mark in this counter options now click on apply for the service condition here we are getting just 5.343 mm of deflection now we have to cross check this one with our code for deflection of floor members for telling us that if you consider only line node in that case deflection limit should be between l by 360 and if you are considering dead load plus line load in that case the limit is l by 240 now what is l l is the shorter direction of highest span in your structure that means l is the shortest distance or shorter dimension of the highest panel of your structure so here as we have used a secondary beam in this panel so this distance is not or this shorter dimension is not not the highest actually here you have to take this value right 3.42 meter by 3.4798 that means here i will take 3.4798 now 3.4798 into 1000 at first i will check for dead load plus live load so i will divide this one by 240 that means 14.49 mm is the limit and here we are getting just 4.343 mm that means for dead load plus live load combo the deflection limit is okay or the value of deflection is okay now we have to check for the live load so again go to display then go to deform shape from here just select live load click on apply here we are getting minus 1.702 mm now go to calculator here we know what 3.47 3.4798 right 3.4798 into 1000 divided by 360 360 equals 9.66 mm is the allowable limit but here we are getting 1.7 mm so we can say for both the condition the deflection limit of our slab is satisfactory that's all for today see you in the next tutorial thank you